a big story down in Florida, and thank you for taking time from your very busy schedule to talk to us about it. NRA and, and, and it's, well, the headline says NRA and doctors spar over gun issue. But I think a quote, and if I can read a quote from you and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit, really kind of gets to the, to the base about it. You said it's about politics, pure, raw, anti-gun politics being imposed on patients when they are most vulnerable, when they are sick or hurt and need help. So, Marion, what is really going on down here in Florida with these doctors? Well, th- this is a campaign that started eight to ten years ago by the American Medical Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics, and they decided to join the gun ban crowd. Their campaign, and if, if anyone wants to go on the American Academy of Pediatrics website, they will see their statement that says, Uh, They support banning guns, and until guns can be banned, they support reducing the number of guns, um, I I believe they use the phrase, in society. But they give pediatricians advice to give to parents, and that's not to buy a gun, and if they own guns, to get rid of them. Mm. So... When they start giving that advice to pediatricians and your very liberal anti-gun pediatricians start taking that advice, uh, then we have problems. Yeah, and, and, and they, Marion, they try to pretend this is all in, in such good faith and so very innocuous, but they're, they're, they're asking things and, and, as you said, advising people and not, to have, not to have a firearm, asking if there's a firearm in the house, in the house and inappropriate questioning. And, and, and let me guess, if, if you had, a, let's say, a high-powered motorcycle and you enjoyed riding that, maybe it wasn't the safest thing, this is, you know, just as an example, I don't think the physicians are going to say, you know, you probably should get rid of that motorcycle, you know, that you have, but they seem to be focused on guns. Well, the, the bottom line is we go to doctors for medical care. We're either sick or hurt or in pain, and we spend our money to go to them to get our health care issues taken care of. We don't want to pay to sit there and be lectured by a pediatrician or a GP telling us that guns are bad and giving erroneous statistics like they have on their website that if you have a gun in the home, it's 43 times more likely to be used on you than not. I mean, this is nonsense. Right. So, it, it, like you said at the top of the show, it's politics. It's not about safety. It's about carrying out a gun ban campaign, and it has to stop. And that's what this bill is all about. Right. And they, they, what we have here is a political agenda, and, and they're pretending they don't have, but they have a political agenda, and that is gun control. And they're inserting themselves. And, and, and Mary, we've talked about this before. I, it always bothers me when they start with the flawed premise that, you know, the firearm is bad. Firearm's not bad. The, the, the firearm is, is a tool, and there's plenty of, of, of Honest, law-abiding gun owners who use them every day for lots of things in Florida, especially, it's not a bad thing. So stop saying that and stop starting with your flawed premise to tell me that I shouldn't have a gun in my home. Well, you know, John, one of the things that I think clarifies this issue uh, was something very unusual that happened in the committee hearing yesterday. The doctor representing the College of Emergency Room Physicians was testifying, and he testified that they have to ask every patient that comes into the emergency room uh, about uh, whether or not they feel safe in their home and whether or not they have guns. And a Democrat, a very liberal, very anti-gun Democrat on the committee sat up and said, wait a minute, you mean anybody that comes into the emergency room? And he said, yes. And he said, well, you mean somebody like a victim of domestic violence? He says, no, anybody. If you come in with a broken ankle, we're going to ask you. And the senator says, now, wait a minute, what does whether or not you own a gun have to do with a broken ankle? 
And he said, because we need to be able to evaluate the patient. Ugh. And he said, well, what's to evaluate? you got a broken yeah. ankle. And so then the senator says, look, I don't want to vote for this bill. I don't like NRA's bills. But I need somebody to give me a reason to vote against it. Can somebody give me a reason to vote against this bill? And he continued and he continued. And finally he said, I'm not seeing it. And he voted for the bill. Wow. So, you know, we had doctors representing the internist. We had doctors representing surgeons. We had doctors representing psychiatrists. We had doctors representing the pediatricians and the Florida Medical Association. And we had the doctor representing the emergency room physicians. And none of them could present any compelling evidence that they needed to ask patients whether or not they owned the gun. And in, in fact, under questioning from the committee chairman, he asked the emergency room doctor, he said, um, are you going to ask me whether or not I live in a home or an apartment or a trailer? And he said, yeah, we could. He said, why do you need to know that? And he says, well, we might need to know whether or not you live in a trailer. And he said, are you going to ask me what the quality of the water is in my home? He said, if we want to. I mean, the pure arrogance of some of these folks is astounding. Wow. But, Jeez. but the reality, John, is this is only a small handful of doctors. The overwhelming majority of doctors don't treat patients that way, don't ask those kinds of questions. But when it comes down to you being one of the patients that sees a doctor who doesn't care about your rights, I mean, how many does it take before you put a stop to it? Yeah, wow. I mean, I'd heard this, and to hear this testimony, it's amazing that this goes on. I'd heard some folks in the past with this stuff where people will just literally get out and get up and walk out of a doctor's office because the line of questioning is like that. It's just, you're right, the arrogance, and just to, not just with firearms, but with the other things, you know. Well, what kind of house do you live in? And what do you drive? And it's like, you know what? That's none of your darn business, you know that? Exactly. Hey. So the the bill passed out of committee four to one, and it's on its way to the next stop. But the the hearing yesterday made a very large statement that that we needed to make. Wow! Uh, this is not something that needs to go on in examining rooms. When you go to a doctor. You want medical care. You don't want moral judgment. You don't want politics. You want to be left alone when it comes to the private parts of your your possessions and your life that have nothing to do with your medical care. And, Marion, thank you for fighting this fight in Florida because what I'm hoping this issue, this happens not just in Florida but in doctor's offices in other parts of the country, and hopefully this will be a good example to other state legislator, le legislatures about you know how to handle this problem when it pops up in other states as well. Well, as you know, John, here in Florida we like to, to pass model legislation, mm -hmm. and that's what we're working on right now. Amen to that. Marion Hammer, thank you so much for the great work you do every day protecting our rights and freedoms, especially the Second Amendment rights down there in Florida. Thanks for being with us on NRA News, and we will follow up with you and find out what's happening with us in, in a few days. All righty. Thank you, ma'am.